You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.net and offplanetradio.com. knowledge and actually restore that knowledge and bring that knowledge forward in the context of where we are in the present time. So what I've been looking at is so diverse. There's so much material to all this, but uh, I've left my intuition kind of guide me in where I'm going to go. And so one of the things that came up in a recent, in recent weeks, and this was on Facebook, was these maps that I've been finding. And it started with something that's very obvious, and I'm gonna screen shoot this as we go. Most of you have probably seen this. Uh, it will get weirder as we go through, I promise you. I will give you nothing less. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that, Randy. No, that better be really weird. Than my possible best as far as weird goes. And uh, let me see here. It's also, the, that map also looks a lot like the one that Dave Politis has that shows the right. missing so people this over the, the bases. This, yeah. this is the missing 411 maps. Yeah. Which if you look, you see concentrations here mm -hmm. in specific areas. And mm -hmm. these are, and what's interesting about this is this, uh, this map here is showing you something kind of interesting, these limestone caves. Uh -huh. and, and, and lava caves, and look where they're located. Right along the same lines, pretty much. With heavy concentrations, we see, it's weird because this map doesn't show it as much here. You see this more here, starting up here in what's basically upper New York State, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and then this whole limestone ridge runs right down this literally, the concentration right here is where I live, mm -hmm. limestone ridges. Runs the whole way down into Kentucky, where you have these massive caves, these massive caverns, and then you see the concentration here again in Texas. Yeah, where and, we were at, where we were at, by the way. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. there's correlation there. And then, I, you know, was doing some searches and listened to some other podcasts and videos. About it. That one is very, very strange. I, it, yeah. Strange. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the good guys can go watch it. It's free. It's free now on, um, on YouTube. So just put in, you know, missing 411 documentary or whatever. And you'll be able to watch it for free on YouTube now. And then obviously, I'm sure you've all listened to Dave Politis over the years recount these stories. You know, if the average person knew anything about that, they would shit their fucking pants. Yeah. You no, know, like nobody knows. Uh, Sunny's asking me to remind her. Uh, so, Sunny, Dave Politis is a researcher who used to be a Bigfoot researcher. And uh, after he was done with his Bigfoot research, he suddenly switched over to researching uh, and these um, th these instances of children, mostly children, but people going missing uh, in national parks and in certain uh, certain kinds of natural settings. And he's been doing this for several years now, and there's hundreds of them. And what he discovered was uh, that he oh you do know that okay. I thought you were asking me to, what were you? Um, so is, is everybody here familiar with Dave Politis' work? So just so I'm not going to, okay, everyone seems to be. So I thought Sunny was asking me to. Uh, Emily, hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. What I was asking was the Dior case you just mentioned. Uh, the, the, the Dior case was this interesting case where um, this, the parents and this little boy went uh i think this was in idaho somewhere they went out camping and they brought along the mother's grandfather and some strange friend of his that was like an ex-con and they were camping and uh the parent the mother and father and the uh, the mother and father and the kid 
went out in the morning for groceries and gas and tampons or something like that, the mother, whatever, right? And then they came back, and after that, they were they went down to go fishing. And I guess the story, although it's fishy, is they left the little boy with the grandfather, and the little boy went missing. And they, you know, scoured this place. I mean, they scoured it, it you know. But there's all this weird stuff going on with, you know, some people think the parents did it. Some people think it was the grandfather. Grandfather was like a kind of a disabled man. So why they would leave the kid with the grandfather is weird. But the, and then his, this friend of his was a younger guy who was an ex con and, and the families and people involved in it have each filed private investigators that seem to be investigating each other with this. It's a very strange case. It's a lot different than any of the other Dave Politis, the Dave Politis cases, but the fact he's not, he's not stupid. And the fact that he um, that he included that in there tells me that they're actually, with all this brouhaha that's happening in the news around this other one, that they're actually working very hard to cover <laughs> something up. Dave Politis speaks one line in the movie, only one line, and it's for this case, and it, 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 it'd be hard to pick if, if I just have that ability to zero in on stuff. And I, I just recognize his voice because he's not on camera. And he told them go look here. And there's been no discussion in an investigation about going to look where Dave Politis told them to go look. So the, at, at this point, like the level of cover up that is being engaged in is no longer just national parks, not keeping records of missing persons, which is what his big issue is with the government. He's filed, he tried to file FOIA requests to get some of this stuff and they told him, Oh, well you can have it for $7 million or something, but they're claiming to him that the national park services don't keep records of missing people, which is, sounds insane, but you know, whatever it is. So that, you know, so now they're going to this level of extent where, you know, they're trying to make it look like all these crazy people, all this whole family is kind of crazy, but no, there was no discussion by any of the people that, that like the, the police or FBI or any of that of going to look in this area that Dave Politis told them to go look fields of rocks that oftentimes the remains or what I think is these the reason that there's bases on these spots and the reason there are national parks on these spots is because these are junctions where multiple realities come together yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where, exactly. where, where yeah. there and this came up in uh, Sonia had a workshop yesterday that we went to and one of the things that we need that, that we were talking about was using coordinates as a determinant of when you are as a rather than, okay, rather than so of where you this are is where we're gonna go Okay. Okay. So I, I just want to, uh, so this map here shows you project, uh, what are basically uh, inner earth access. Mm -hmm. Again, following a lot of the same patterns. They're not perfect. Not all. If, I sat down and tried to overlap these, overlay these maps. It's difficult because they're different sizes and proportions. None of it really fits. So you kind of have to do pattern matching. They don't all match exactly, but the relative level of activity in specific areas, especially when you start to look at the East Coast down through, this oddly enough, this route, this cluster here is exactly the route we took going into Kentucky, down through mm -hmm. West Virginia, um, Maryland, West Virginia, and then into uh, Kentucky. And so this is a heavy concentration here the whole way up through the New England states, all these limestone ridges, and I will add as well quartz. That's not inconsiderable. Mm -hmm. limestone ridges, but there's a quartz, yeah. of quartz. And specifically in New England, around Connecticut, there's heavy embedments of rose quartz. Which which gets uh -huh. as well. Yes. So in, in, in upstate New York, they have those Herkimer diamonds too. That one area yep. in New York is where all the Herkimer diamonds come from, yep. and those are quite interesting. So the the overlaps are first off that we have these, these heavy concentrations of geologic. This will get more interesting and it'll go into the heart of some things that we've talked about. Emily and I have talked about this for years, about what happens when we start to deal with uh, hydrological aspects, water, and uh, 
Awesome. And I like went. Edwards Aquifer, where it says there's San Antonio, San Antonio area bases and Edwards Aquifer. Yep. Edwards yep. Aquifer runs from, through, it goes through Austin. It's where Barton Springs is. It's where the Colorado River comes and meets all the different lakes and, in Austin and Barton Springs is on top of it. And that Edwards aquifer was where I have uh, a lot of my strange multi-layered reality memories from training yeah. times in Austin. Yeah. yeah. Edwards so, aquifer. Again, have you got the map in the right place. That's kind of like where Dallas is. And anyway, I would agree with that. Go ahead. So yeah. again, look at the concentrations of where we're at. Same mm -hmm. patterns running again. See, when I started out with this, I've never lived in a place that doesn't have a huge, uh, a huge conglomeration of those. <laughs> yeah, um, the constant. I was originally researching this area around the peninsula here at Pennsylvania, Maryland. Uh huh. I was looking at the Edgewood Arsenal. Edgewood Arsenal. Yeah. Um, Aberdeen testing area and Fort uh -huh. Detrick all clustered down here in Maryland. But the interesting thing about this geological area is how heavily concentrated it is in all of the geological markers of limestone quartz and then these water conduits, yep. which feed out underground into the Chesapeake Bay. Going it's interesting, as you look at the dots, there's only a few dots that aren't near some sort of water exactly. situation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if you look out here, and it's like weird, you get to the northwest, like the central part of the country here, this is like no man's land. Uh -huh. This is the outlier, the heaviest concentration, obviously the Great Lakes area as well. And don't uh -huh. forget, we have Lake Erie sitting up here in Pennsylvania. Um, but again, go down and look at Texas again. There it is. Look uh -huh. out here. Look right where you would find. Isn't this weird because this is, you think this is desert area, but these are concentrations of a very specific type. Well, look at this, look at the similarities between the kind of water concentration there is in Tucson and then very, and the edge over here off of Los Angeles is right where there's just a, you can't, it's not a heavily, have, it's not a big waterway, but there's these similar, like little tiny ones. And that is right in the area where Malibu connects to Chatsworth through the underground base system, right? But then there's little itty bitty ones in Tucson and there's, you know, there's bigger ones in Texas. But I'm telling you, some of these little itty, I mean, obviously there's these big, huge systems, but some of these little ones are connected to each other through railways as well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And we've talked about that. Um, <laughs> and there are some of those water, some of those waters there in like Southern Central California was where that big base was blown up when there was the earthquakes this summer, right? There's water there. <clears throat> There's all sorts of, up in Nevada, there's water at the Pyramid Lake area. There's one of those bases and the waterway at that Pyramid Lake area. Robert and I talked about that a couple of weeks ago as another strange spot where some of these things are happening. So what that map shows you there is a very specific type of geological and hydrological formation. It's called karst. And karst. It's basically a landscape formed by the dissolution of soluble rocks, including limestone and dolomite. Dolomite. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Again, look at the and look at Florida. I would have yeah. never guessed Florida had this concentration of this. Yeah. <clears throat> These are U.S. geological maps, by the way. Mm -hmm. So that shows you that there's again. Here we are, and out here. So. Maybe we should be looking into the time qualities of limestone and dolomite. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. This also makes me think about um, Josh Reeves' work on the rock wall in Texas and all of the different kinds of um, minerals and things that he found there. And he, he actually even talks it, some of them about finding things that he thinks were like embedded, pr like primeval kind of clocks in some of these walls and things like that, like really interesting stuff. And he's a crystal guy. That's what he does for his work outside of uh, outside of his show. Is he say, is he sells minerals and crystals and stuff like that? Damn it! Nice job collecting all these maps, Randy. That all have that same <coughs> stuff. Know. This is look. This started with what was essentially 
that original missing 411 map and um, two other maps, which were bases. I mm -hmm. now have a dozen maps, mm -hmm. and ancillary images as a result of that one thing. Like when I originally posted this on Facebook, I was just going to sit down and riff through this. What wound up coming up was that uh, even this morning, a map came up. So mm -hmm. here we go again, map US mass anomalies. Mm -hmm. so this is showing you kind of a, a snapshot view again. I mean, this isn't quite as focused as the other maps, but I do think it's interesting because it's showing you mm -hmm. UFO activity, portal vortex, mm -hmm. UFO bases, and quote, suspected inner earth entrances, which is exactly what... Again, which is... Okay. I'm going back to my own location here and my own experiences. This access to inner earth, Maury, you'll, okay. you'll grasp some of this from Ida Dorpa as well, and anybody that's read Ida Dorpa. But again, go down here through Kentucky. Where was the entrance to Ida Dorpa? Yeah, it was in Kentucky. For bonus points. It was in Kentucky. Yeah. That's where they accessed Ida Dorpa. Randy, you had somebody on the show several years ago who researched a missing person so there was like some weird thing with native americans and some cave in kentucky or tennessee you remember what was her name do you know who i'm talking about i don't remember actually yeah it, it, there was some crossover between her research and a couple of the dave politis cases <laughs> but the one that she was mostly talking about was i believe in kentucky i'm pretty sure it was kentucky or tennessee it was in those mountains there she was a, oh, I, I cannot remember her name <sighs> I can't remember. I but can't uh, do you even remember? Do you even remember the show that I'm talking about? Vaguely. Okay. I'm my own worst archivist. I don't <laughs> Y'all see where all these lines are going into Texas near the top there? Yeah. 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 Where is that right there? What is, that's not Amarillo. It's down a little you bit. You would know Texas better than I do. <laughs> that's okay. the other place. There's another place that reminds me of Amarillo. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, I it's just, down. I suspect all these lines here are triangulations of different base systems. I mean, I was told that there was an entire underground system that ran coast to coast. So look at your entryway here. Where is this? This is like San Diego, probably. Yeah, that's a little higher. San Diego, so that's actually, no, that's, that's Los Angeles. That's Mal where the triangle is, is Chatsworth. Okay. Okay. And where the, um, and where the uh, stuff more on the coast is, is, is Malibu. But look at that line. That line runs straight across. And geologically, it would be interesting to know all the terrain. Of oh, the down there, the, the, the inner earth, the inner earth entrance. That is San Diego. That's like um, that's yeah. like right. Oh, yeah, that is that, that's inland. It's more like um, Texacali. Sorry, Mexicali. And I'm wondering yeah. up here because it's off the map. Is this Vancouver? I'm Where? Just, where my pointer is, if, can you see? Uh, Vancouver is a uh, Vancouver is a little more west. Vancouver's on the coast. <clears throat> yeah, that's more like that one looks more like it's uh, what's the other place? Calgary or Alberta or something like that. That might make Edmonton. Sense. Edmonton, but maybe. Look how that runs on a straight mm -hmm. southeast trajectory right down into Florida. Mm -hmm. Um. So what we're looking at is just a phenomenal... Yes, that is near the Canadian desert islands, Annie. You're correct, yeah. Yeah. So, again, you know, after a while you start to amass all this data and you're going, there's, there, there are patterns here. Mm -hmm. um, all, of these, all of these possible portal vortexes, I mean, we know about Sedona, we know that Mm -hmm. I, I know of at least a half dozen that are here in the Northeast, and then obviously, you know, out here in the West, but there's an abundance of these things. They're, they're all over the place. In, like the, the ones that are marked here are the ones that are big and everyone knows about, but you can find them all over the place in California, New Mexico, Arizona. Um, they're all over the place. That, so, dot, that dot up in Canada is Calgary. Yeah, that's what I thought. Either Calgary or Edmonton is Calgary. So, okay. Here's one that, that'll be interesting. Um, and this will pull in the geopolitical aspect as well. This is surprising. Look at this. 
foreign trade zones in the United States. <laughs> look how they run. Uh -huh. Again, yeah. they're falling in these same patterns. They're not perfect. Because uh -huh. what we're doing is pattern matching here. But who would have thought that foreign trade zones were sitting right in these same areas and for what purpose? I'll point out too that I don't have the maps for them right now, but telecom mm -hmm. and underground utilities seem to follow these same patterns. Yeah. Which is, again, some of the stuff was random, but the fact that it kept coming up in such a profusion, mm -hmm. I, was, I was just, day after day, these maps were just coming up and I wasn't searching for them. They were, they were just showing up in places that I didn't expect to see. Yeah. And so this one will probably be a little bit more obvious. We'll just throw this on the old pile for the sake of um, continuing to build a narrative here that, you know, truthfully, I brought, decided to bring this to the group because I wanted to get everybody's input on this. I, Randy, before you go too far, uh, uh, that last map you showed, I looked at that and I said, holy shit, that's where a lot of the Air Force bases are. Those, yep. every, I, because I, you know, I was in the Air Force. I'm familiar with a lot of the locations. Every, I looked at the holy crap! There, 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 there. I, there. <laughs> I have base maps here too. I bet you they're very similar. Um, let me see if I can find the base maps. Again, I'm. I would have liked to have put this into a PowerPoint, but that can get tedious too. So we're kind of freewheeling here. But uh, some of this is surprising. Some of it's not. Some of it is. Uh, I was looking to see if the base maps show up here. Okay, I, right now I'm not finding the base map, but you already know this. You know that the bases are falling. That is interesting, Steve. Right into alignment. This one is a little more interesting. Um, Did Randy, the woman's name was Mary Joyce. Yes. Uh, I saw her. Yes. Yes, that, thank you, Colleen. That's it. Thank you, Colleen. I had completely forgotten about interviewing Mary Joyce. Thank you. Yeah. Colleen. Yeah, and what Stephen noticed about that map you showed, Randy, Steve Creamy said, interesting that the note at the bottom of the page said these zones are considered foreign soil and do not contribute in any way to the tax economic base. And the, yeah, the tax ones, exempt zones. That's what the, I mean. The, one, the ones in the ones in that were showed, were showed in Southern California. Some of those were there at the Long Beach Harbor, which until just uh, not that long ago was owned by China. And yep. and now I, the, the the it's closed or something is going on because Trump is trying to kick them out. But that's where a lot of the child trafficking goes on, mm -hmm. is through that Long Beach uh, Long Beach Harbor there. That's where um, my father was stationed in the Navy was at Long Beach. Yeah. yeah. So this one is interesting, not quite <clears throat> as profound but worth considering when you're looking at the, like the foreign trade. Uh, yep. This is the location, U.S. cartel presence measured by active consolidated priority organization target cases in fiscal year 15 and levels of influence weighted based on the amount of cases against population density. This is a DEA map. Wow. So again, look here, same things. Look here. Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah. I would have never guessed, and yet I was in Lexington. I ate dinner in Lexington on Thursday night. No, Lexington has that weird vibe to it. It's I've been very there. weird vibe. Very weird. Yeah. Here we are down in Texas again. It's a bunch of. It's a weird vibe that's covered up by a bunch of bluegrass and horses, right? But but like so, the the landscape is gorgeous. But that is one very strange place, Lexington. Uh, Kentucky's like that. Kentucky is really a very strange place. And yet, uh -huh. while I was down there, there's this series running. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's called Hellier. It's running on HBO. And it is about these paranormal occurrences in Hellier, Kentucky, <laughs> largely around. Um... <laughs> Steve Creamy, where is the off planet cartel? This is yeah, it right here. <laughs> so again, you know, here we go. Uh, same patterns. Why are cartels, why are foreign trade zones, which let's face it, they're kind of the same thing. Yeah, they're exactly, it is exactly the same thing. What is, what is the commonality that draws them? The bases 
the concentration of paranormal UFO missing 411, all of this stuff. Because that that's where the junctions of different timelines come together and yeah. people who are really good at evading capture and not getting caught doing things and, you know, wanting to be able to, um, you know, whatever it is they're doing, you have a, a junction of realities where I imagine some of these caverns, like these holes in the ground, there's like literal pocket universes in them, in them. Like, not the kind that you just sort of have to create an open space like Walter did, but, like, literally, you, you know, vibrate through a wall and you're in, like, a whole other world. Yeah. We've been talk uh, talking about, uh, I was at Dr. Key's office the other day, and she brought up the inner earth people and stuff like that, and we were talking about having your vibration match the area of the earth you're trying to enter through. And so it's almost like, you know, you can bring your vibratory state, you can enter a door that otherwise might require, uh, you know, a fingerprint or a pass key or whatever. And so I think these are certain sort of vibrational realms that people have become, uh, or that people have gone there either because they know they're there or they've become aware of as they work through these spots. And now it's used for everything, including child trafficking and drug trafficking and, you know, all that kind of shit. And, and that's what they do at these Bilderberg meetings and these big meetings where they all gather and they, they stay at those hotels that have that symbol on them. Yeah. Because that's what they do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they do. Yeah. That's why no one else is allowed in there. Yeah. This will surprise you a little bit. Maybe not. So about two weeks ago, I don't know how many people know. Um, there was a complete outage of Bank of America. Like Bank of America's entire system went down. Well, <laughs> there's, there's the huge <laughs> of the Bank of America outage. That right there. Oh my God. Look at that. I mean, we're threading through, and these maps, I did not go looking for these. These maps literally crawled up on my desktop and said, hello, here I am, keep looking. Well, I think that pretty much tells you right there what's backing the, fun, the, bank, the Bank of America. I think we have our answers to what it is that backs the banking system right there. It's a whole, this is loose farming. Yep. Whatever they've tapped into, they've tapped into the geological, hydrological, mm -hmm. natural vortexal. It's tapped into these tunnel systems. It's tapping into a time, we're talking about temporal hijacking. Yes, yeah, I agree. So, it's hard for me to, this like is so fucking mine. Steve Mercer says their logo encodes 33, 11, 11, 11. Of course it does, of course yeah. it does. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we already know that there's major money laundering. Them and Deutsche Bank are probably the two biggest. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that temporal hijacking was really good. It's like the book hijackers on so on a book. <laughs> this got me to a place where I started to think about um, narrative thoughts. Well, here it comes. So, I don't know how many people were familiar Ooh. with Noah Dashi. Oh yeah, the Prime Rivers. I went looking for my book this morning. It appears to have dropped into the same black hole that the Revelation book dropped into, so it'll show up in a couple of months when I need it. But Guru Adashi is super interesting. There's a couple of websites. One of them is called Torch Ritual. He's kind of like Chris Knowles, which, oh, by the yeah. way, if you are uh, on Freeman's uh, site, you need to go listen to the interview he did last night with Chris Knowles. Mm. Um, because Chris Knowles kind of parallels Goro Adashi in some interesting ways. I love Chris Knowles. Steve, Steve uh, passed on Chris Knowles' contact information to me, Randy, so if we want to try and get him yeah, on. I, I actually was in on an interview with Chris Knowles back in 2009 when he was just coming out. Mm -hmm. with this and Knowles freaked out in that show, by the way. He was bumping up against things then that he just wasn't psychologically and emotionally ready to deal with. Yeah. Um, he kind of melted down for a while, but he's really picked up the ball and run. I mean, he does he's Good an, stuff. amazing work. Yeah. Goro Adashi kind of does this thing where he's mapping time to these rivers and he overlays, <clears throat> he overlays the Nile to the Mississippi River in the United States. 
is a pretty interesting concept. And he then marks out on these river points aspects that are temporal hot points and where key events are occurring. And so his whole thesis is that we're geologically mapped on the physical surface of the earth to a temporal outline. Yeah. So it really is when are we as opposed to where are we? It's all about when and where. They're intermingled. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the more I look at this and I see these, these vertical entry points, I mean, I don't think the earth's round. I don't think it's flat. We've said, you know, it's... It's basically oscillating vortexes. But yeah. these time rivers, you know, the more I looked at these maps, I'm going, there's inflection points here. There's something going on that triggers and feeds this activity at this high level. It's not just one thing. It's like a convergence. So when we're mm -hmm. dealing with time, we're dealing with time and space. And I mean space literally. Yeah. So here's one more of these random maps that came up. This actually literally hit me in the eyes this morning. I was randomly going through some posts. And where do you see this? So this is what got me to thinking about Goro Adashi and the Time Rivers. This is a map overlay of Egypt over the United States. Wow. So the question becomes exactly what kind of a construct do we live on? Or in, or well, there's those pyramids in in Memphis. Yeah, the Black Pyramid. And that's sure. uh, Chris Knowles talk about talks about those pyramids in Memphis when he's talking about the uh, chick from the uh, what's that band? The um, oh oh um, yeah, I know who you mean. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, he's he, talking about the, the he was the, that's when he was doing the work on the sirens. Um, yeah, the siren. The, her song is the siren. Cocteau twins. Cocteau twins. twins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. But that the, um, there's I, I like I've been to that Black Pyramid there before. They used to have gymnastics meets in that Black Pyramid. Um, of course I did. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I mean, ultimately, when you start to look at this, you suddenly realize that that we're encompassed in in, in basically like a hypercube. Yeah. Like when we start to look at this. Are we like traversing time and space inside of a hypercube that's representational of the earth in this like that we're transiting time and space literally through portals? I listened to a, a, a good video about this guy talking about his DMT trip a few weeks ago, but he was just trying to explain the idea of like uh, dimensional space. And he had this graphic of like a tesseract folding in and out and folding in and out. Yeah, and that exact, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, so ultimately, let's go back to this because I think we've looked at this before, but it's continued to be the gift that just keeps on giving for me. And Emily and I have talked about doing a show on this, but I just have never been able to completely put together what the heck in one of the groups. Yeah, we need to do that one. Yep, this yep, is yep. the Arctic Monkeys tour yep. poster for Auckland, New Zealand. But I keep coming back to this and I'm going... When I first saw this image, and I found this image, I think on Tumblr, it was a blog post, and I looked at it and I went, what the? Because mm -hmm. the way I looked at it, this is probably not the greatest, the res, I'm still trying to get high res for this, like I've finally been able to track down where this poster came from and who produced it and the artists that put it out. But the things that, that are the most interesting are watching this figure here swimming down. But look at this maze. What does this maze represent? I mean, look, somebody mapped this out. I just did. I just completed the maze. I did it. <laughs> and what's inside of it? The secret the sun inside. Secret sun there inside there. Inside the earth. Yeah, and look at what's on the other side over there. It's like in the. Another. Oh, Another one, and this goes to there's you know a lot of people who believe in the flat earth think think that we're on an ending plane that has domes with each dome has a different earth or a different planet on it or whatever. So, so here's more or less what I'm trying, and it's what I keep trying to get to and working through kind of the hypercube tesseract model of this thing. That sphere that you see 
in the center of the maze. What if that is where you access this sphere here yeah. that we're yeah. seeing? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So if you look, yeah. for instance, at the moon or yeah. something that you consider to be, quote, in space, the actual access to this isn't up. It's it, no, down. Down and in. in. Down and in, yeah. And look at this goldfish here. I don't know if you can see the detail on it. There's a Masonic symbol on the keychain. It's real hard to make out because I have this blown up so much. Which, which goldfish are you looking Which one are you looking Put, put your on pointer on it? Lower right corner. The goldfish. I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Its mouth. Oh, yeah. And there's a Masonic symbol on that keychain. Yeah. So... That's kind of where we get to the place where we're going, okay, we're dealing with something here that the, the construct, we're still trying to piece together who we are, where we are, and how we are inside of the, a temporal maze. And that's kind of where I park this today because I'm not making any conclusions about it. Um, I think... I think other people are poking around the edges of this now and starting to get it. Yes, Colleen, that maze does look a lot like the brain. Yeah, it does. And, and I've postulated that the secret space program is the mind control program, right? Well, it's inside that, the yeah. mind, yeah. Well, we've said that it's simulation. Yeah. And I actually, you know, as offensive as that probably is going to be, I'd say even to some of the people who have been in programs, even somebody like Duncan, um, I think we have to deal with the fact that when we say simulation, that doesn't make it any less real. Nope, nope. It makes it more real. Because what is a simulation designed to do except to, in the brain... Trigger you into thinking something's happening. Well, or even to simulate something as a means to bring you into a space for that. Yeah, thing. yeah. Also, I think the secret space program is... is connected to the brain mapping program, right? I think that's the space they're actually exploring yeah. is the brain. Yeah. You know, but yes, the, uh, if you guys ever watched Person of Interest, by the very end of the series, I, the character Shaw had been run through so many simulations that she couldn't even stand to be alive anymore because she could not differentiate what was real and what was the simulation, like what that she had been run through as part of her programming. Isn't that really, and isn't that really what this is about? Look, yes. look, at, uh, look at what's going on in, like <laughs> just in the United States, in the world in general, but look at the amount of disassociative responses that people are mirroring constantly now. The echo chamber in alt media, the general news cycle, which is creating these hyper stratified political platforms, the, the fury around Trump, the fury around the Democrats. I mean, I'm old enough now that I've watched politics arguably for 50 years. As a kid, I was around, my family was very political. And when I look at what's in the news now, and I look at how it's being represented, this is on a scale that we've never seen before in terms of stratification and division. Yep. This is a psychological operation. I mean, you live in a people live in, people live if depending on which channel you get your news from, you live in completely different realities. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. They're mind mapping the public. You have an affinity to a certain stance of politics, lifestyle, whatever, and they map you to that. And the internet's doing the same thing. It's much more granular in terms of how the internet maps us because it's tracking us constantly and it's taking note and then Google is doing feedback based on that and they're running an heuristics program that basically then does a feedback on you you went here will you go there can you go to this and and after a while the simulation inside the computer is the reality there are yep. people yeah there are people this is the reality they have no reality beyond it Yep. It's unbelievable. Yep. All right, well, that's what I had for today, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, before we wind it down here, let's hear from you guys. What, is it, what, what say you all? And 
This is Off Planet Radio.